Hello everyone, welcome back to our channel Software Dude. Today we are going to dive into the fundamental concept of system design that is gateway patterns. And I want to thank Pooja for suggesting this, uh, this content uh, in one of the comments in one of our videos. Uh, and I really thought that her question was, was pretty good. So thanks for commenting and I would encourage all of you please post uh, video ideas. I do take those and it also gives me some kind of you know uh, uh, areas to look into uh, and then provide and uh, create videos around that. And gateway actually is a is a is an excellent uh, system design concept and also a very used concept, right? So gateways play a crucial role in managing and optimizing interactions in complex systems. Correct. So in this video, we'll explore different types of gateway patterns. We'll understand what exactly is a gateway. The purpose is by the end of the video, you will exactly understand what gateways are used for and how they how they basically contribute to you know scalable, secure, and efficient uh, architectures. Right. So let's get started. So what is exactly a gateway? Right. A gateway is an interface between different components subsystems or external systems right in a software application or distributed system right gateways basically help manage the flow of data right uh, flow of control access right provide a means of uh, means to decouple different parts of the system so to speak right now there are multiple types of gateway patterns but the five most used gateway patterns are uh, the api gateway pattern i think most of us are aware of of what an API gateway is, but we primarily focus on what an API gateway is, but not exactly the API gateway pattern. There is a difference, right? Uh, database gateway, authentication gateway, message and message broker gateway, right? So there are two patterns mixed in one, uh, and then cloud service gateway, because I think uh, currently with so many cloud pack platforms uh, in the market, cloud services gateway in terms of hybrid cloud has also become very popular. Right. So uh, let's start with the API gateway. API gateway is a central entry point for client requests in a microservice architecture. Right. Basically handles routing, load balancing, authentication, right, request response transformation for multiple microservices. Right. So for example, if you uh, if you think about it, it performs the task of routing incoming requests to the appropriate microservices or right or or service based on the request URL or other criteria, right? It basically helps in decoupling clients from the internal structure of the system, right? And logging and monitoring, obviously the centralized logging and monitoring of requests and responses passing through the API gateway help in tracking multiple things like performance, identifies issues, debugging capabilities, gaining insights uh, of the into the overall health of the system, right? Uh, authentication and authorization obviously right because um, we can obviously the one of the first layer of of uh, items and uh, tasks that uh, we perform is uh, basically to handle authentication and authorization right it can enforce security measures uh, it can verify user identities control access to different services based on a predefined role or policy right uh, rate limiting, yes, I mean, uh, we can obviously implement uh, rate limiting to control the number of requests uh, requests a client can make within a specific specified time frame, right? Uh, so this basically helps to prevent abuse or say uh, ensures fair usage. There is no, no, uh, no resource overload uh, and also protects the system from being overwhelmed by uh, excessive requests, right? Uh, caching obviously to improve the performance and reduce response times uh, api gateways can implement caching it basically stores frequently requested data and serves it directly to clients right reducing the need to make a redundant call back to the microservice right and obviously like we mentioned i mean it, it does request resource response transformation or aggregation so to speak uh, to adapt to uh, requirements of different microservices, right, or different clients. This basically also includes like uh, data format conversation, right, uh, conversion, uh, protocol translation, right, or other modifications, whatever is needed. Right? Uh, where API gateway pattern is primarily used, it is suitable for managing and securing communications between clients and microservices in a distributed system, like we understood here, right. Next is 
database gateway database gateway is a central access point to interact with different databases right it handles connection pooling uh, for example messages uh, like like or say it manages a pool of database connections right to efficiently handle uh, not just connection but also disconnection overhead so whenever you are trying to connect to a database there also has to be a termination so it handles that right query optimization like obviously it can optimize this database queries to enhance the performance and reduce the load on the databases uh, data transformation again transforms the data between uh, the format expected by the application and the format stored in the database both of these uh, those might not always be same exactly right you, what you might want to respond back in a response uh, to an api call or something uh, might be different than what you are actually internally storing in the database right um, uh, then there is error handling, uh, which is obviously it provides a centralized mechanism for handling errors, exceptions related to uh, uh, database interactions, right, or table interactions. There can be exceptions of or error handling, like uh, how you would uh, do in a normal normal microservice, but it can be done through the gateway in the database gateway. And obviously, security. Uh, it basically it enforces security measures like managing database uh, credentials or uh, ensuring secure communication between the application and the database right and uh, database abstraction abstraction primarily might not be used everywhere but uh, here i wanted to say where it abstracts the specific uh, like details of different databases right there can be applications which can connect to different types of databases in the background right a document databases a time series database graph database i have talked about all these databases also separately in in another video uh, you can you can take a look at that uh, but there are applications where if there is a need you have to adapt to different types of databases right and that is where uh, uh, it basically abstracts the specific details of each database system uh, which allows the application to interact with the the gateway in a standardized uh, interface right now uh, basically through a contract right uh, primarily it is used in microservices architectures where each service may need to interact with various databases right so database gateway is uh, second most important in my opinion uh, third moving on to authentication gateway right authentication gateway centralizes the user authentication and authorization logic right for example Authentication and authorization can come in various formats, uh, but uh, I think primarily some of the use cases that authentication gateway can handle are like authentication, for example, verifying the identity of users, um, which can be through typically through say username password, multi-factor authentication, integrating with third-party identity providers, right? Uh, which can also include like OAuth providers, LDAP, Active Directory, and all those. Uh, then there is token validation. Uh, if a system uses tokens, like for example, uh, JSON web tokens, uh, which are like JWTs, for authentication, gateway validates and decodes these tokens, right, to ensure the uh, their integrity and authenticity. Right? Access control obviously enforces access control policies based on the authenticated user's role or permission, right? It determines whether a user has the right to access a particular resource to perform a specific action right so that is also very critical so authentication gateway is another very important uh, gateway pattern now moving to message and message broker gateway uh, before moving into uh, the specific uh, things that it does let's look at the two gateways patterns primarily like what do they mean uh, message gateway basically abstracts the complexity of interacting with various message messaging protocols and channels offering a unified interface basically for sending and receiving messages through different channels like for example that can be email sms chat or anything right and then there is a message broker gateway uh, which is an intermediary for communication between various services right providing a messaging backbone it basically handles message routing queuing publish subscribe messaging right uh, so these are two types used in conjunction in different applications right if you think about it in that way um, so uh, what are some of the primary functionalities for example protocol mapping it handles the translation or mapping of messages between different messaging protocols uh, right this allows the message to uh, basically source uh, like it allows the message source to use a standardized interface right abstracting the details of uh, specific messaging technologies right i mean that can that 
the application will not need to know. Uh, so it can abstract that. Message routing, yes, determines the appropriate, uh, for example, destination for each message, right? Uh, it can direct it to the, the intended recipient uh, or the intended messaging channel, right? So it, it handles the routing. Uh, does queue management, like for example, it manages queues and ensures uh, reliable and asynchronous message delivery. Messaging is one of the uh, asynchronous patterns, so to speak. You generally don't implement services which do messaging or notification based systems uh, in a synchronous manner. So asynchronous message delivery it handles. Um, even if there are temporary say disruptions or system failures that can still work. So where the, the management of a queue is important because the message gets stored in the queue or get dropped to a dead letter queue right and then it can be recovered and redriven to send the message right. So it manages queue. And then obviously transformations, yes, uh, performs any uh, necessary like uh, translation or transformation on the messages. Uh, for example, converting data formats, um, it can enrich the content of the message or adapting the, match, uh, the message to match the expectations of the receiving components, like the application send, can send a message, right? But what it needs to be shown to an external user can be different. So you can do that transformation, right? So message gateway and message broker gateway are, are pretty important. And then, like I mentioned, cloud services gateway. Cloud services gateway are a standardized way to access and manage services across multiple cloud providers, right? Like they are, today there are multiple cloud providers like AWS, Azure, Google. AWS, obviously, you can look up the playlist where we do discuss AWS videos also. But there are multiple cloud providers and all of these cloud providers provide a varied, uh, uh, you know, types of solutions and services. So you as an application builder or a, or a solution builder can actually integrate with multiple uh, cloud services to pick and choose, right, uh, like as building blocks uh, of different components and tie them together to build your own application, right. So that is possible. And to do that, the primary uh, the primary role is played by the gateway, which it basically does multiple things. But some of the pop popular uh, and most common operations that it does is uh, it translates communication protocols. Right, it allows clients to use a standardized protocol when interacting with the cloud service, uh, which in itself might use a different protocol. Right. Uh, then obviously uh, it establishes and manages connections to multiple cloud service providers like where it basically ensures uh, there is a seamless communication. It optimizes traffic uh, right, by handling tasks like uh, uh, say load balancing, routing, traffic shaping to improve performance and resource utilization. Uh, security obviously uh, implements a lot of security measures but also uh, not just the security in terms of access but also uh, security in terms of encryption of data right in transit at rest uh, to protect sensitive information right uh, monitoring and analytics right uh, for example it provides uh, capabilities to track performance usage uh, health of interactions with the cloud services right uh, i mean you can use analytics for optimization and also for troubleshooting right so there are multiple use cases uh, when you are integrating with different cloud services even when you are integrating with one cloud service it might make sense to actually build a gateway because you never know you can also go ahead and have a need for a separate cloud service which is probably provided by one of them but not by the one that you are using right so that way gateway is uh, the cloud service gateway is an important pattern and it is primarily useful in hybrid cloud or multi cloud setups uh, to abstract and manage the interactions right with various cloud uh, services so these are all the cloud service gateways. So basically, I think uh, I hope that the gateway, what what exact role gateway plays in system design, is 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 somewhat clear. Uh, and whenever you are designing systems, primarily in terms of in, in interviews, talking about these can really boost your 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 interview uh, response. Like talking about in terms of gateway, in terms of uh, trade-offs right I mean if there is no certain path there can be questions asked from in different categories you never know there can be scenarios that are added after the initial scenario so talking about those also provide extensibility um, future looking design where even if there is a need to adapt to a different message gateway or say a, 
different cloud service, right? I mean, your gateway can already have that. So your, your system design is already foolproof, so to speak, and future looking, right? So that is what a gateway is. And these are like the top five gateway patterns in system design. Hopefully this was useful. Thanks for watching.